Okay, so this is part two. We're starting with Central Yarnum. So let's go ahead and warp. Uh, first big thing coming up is Sewer Skip. Mm, not near as bad as something like Clinic Skip, but to me it's still it's still up there on difficult things to do, especially consistently. Okay, so we just start running. Just hold down circle. Run this general path. Gonna jump off about here, lock on, spam circle for a dash, unlock, grab these mollies. Follow this path around, kinda hug the right side. Follow this path here. I'm just holding down circle the whole time as so far, outside of that little bit of stamina magic past the mollies. Go here, still holding down circle. This general path. That guy, if he if he doesn't shoot before you like kind of get up there, you're probably gonna have to plan out a quick little or juke movement. You can pick up those vials. Right here, I'm actually gonna kill an extra dog because normally you wouldn't want to kill this dog. And that one there, you wouldn't want to kill that one either. So what you normally want to do is like when you run up here, you'd pretty much just go straight for this. You would knock out this dog and break this big sort of coffin. I think it is here or something. <clears throat> and then uh, you'd have these suitcases here to run up on. Uh, I'm going to actually make a save file real quick though. For the server skip. I'll start it here so we can pretend like we're running down at the beginning. <clears throat> Let's make a save file real fast. Um, just gonna touch on this real quick. Keep in mind, there are many, many ways to do the skip. I'm just showing you my preferred way. <clears throat> if you break the the actual suitcases, which most people call them boxes, and I'll probably reference them as boxes as well. Uh, if you break them, um, you lose roughly forty seconds. Um which may be a bit more depending on how long it takes you to do your first attempt. So it's, if the skip's too much of a hassle, um, you know, you can skip the skip, but then again, 40 seconds is quite a lot of time. I mean, even if you go for the skip like five or six times in a row and mess it up every time, you're still gonna save a little bit of time, maybe even just flat out break even versus um, you know, going through the sewers, so <clears throat> definitely worth trying. And you know, you go for it. Worst case scenario, the boxes just break, and you have to go through the sewer, or you just start the run over. <clears throat> okay, so so we we just busted through right there. We're running down. There's a dog in this this cage right here to our right. We ignore him. We're still running down. There's this place. Uh, we break the kind of coffin and kill the dog at the same time. Dog, this dog doesn't matter because he can't ever get out of his cage. Mainly doing is breaking this coffin here, so he can get up to access these suitcases. So once we break it, we start sprinting and kind of run straight into this section. And once we're sprinting, you sort of jump and get up on this lip here. I like to turn my camera as such and then line up my character uh, with that post right there at the end of the fence. So you have the statue here and then the post to the left. Um, I start sprinting just past this sort of little middle lip or this little middle is a little extension that comes out and like get just sort of in front of it about here-ish. We start sprinting into it just past that. And then you sort of, I might have to kill this dog. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna kill him real fast. Just to get him out of the way. Okay, so we're running, we're jumping up, get lined up here, run, start sprinting about here-ish, just past that little middle part. And then once we start sprinting, we're gonna sort of whip our character 90 degrees and go straight up and jump off relatively soon after we start running if you jump too early the skip's not gonna work you want to actually like get some footing on the the column or the post 
for you to quit out on because the way this game works with a quit out is the last place you actually had footing according to the game is where your character is going to spawn back in when you come in from a quit out so and that post at the top is where we're going to come back in on we start sprinting run and jump and here i actually went for a plunge i I just, I don't know, I just like going for the plunge sometimes, it just feels right. But this is basically exactly where you would spawn had I not done the plunge attack and I rolled off and I quit out. When I come back in, I'll be pretty much exactly here. So this gets us on the fence. <coughs> Sorry. Whereas if you ran and jumped from that point and landed, say, on this part of the fence and quit out and came back in, I think it would have to be pretty much pixel perfect. I don't even honestly know if it's possible that you have enough footing according to the game to not land on one of these posts. Like you can do it here. You can do it on this post. If it was possible to easily get on this one, I mean, you could use any of these posts, but most people use these first two just within reason. <clears throat> so yeah, we hit here after we jump off and it rolls us off into the sewer we drop him down there and we quit out just pretty much as soon as you can just go ahead and quit out when you come back in you'll be here and then for this part uh i like to sprint but some people can't run straight very well uh but you can you're gonna have that dog down there to deal with so you need to do this relatively fast so you can just sprint off like so and just sprint right off the edge with the way that dog is though if you want to make it a bit safer when you get about maybe here-ish start slowing down and then you're just moving at a normal like a a non-circle like this this pace right here this kind of light jogging so you're letting go of the circle you maybe move at that pace like in this general area that way when this dog comes from here and tries to lunge at you you're able to just roll on the fence you know keep keep your analog stick straight and you can do a roll to sort of iframe his attacks so let's Go ahead and try that again. I'm going to try a quit out version this time. So run and sprint. Jump up here. I might mess this up. Get sprinting about here. You see how you hit that? I'm, and I'm waiting to quit out, but you don't want to wait that long. I'm just showing you. You have a, you have a good ways <clears throat> that you fall. So you have time to pull up the quit out relatively fast. You have time to pull up your quit out without having to stress too much. But, you know, the faster you do it, the better. <clears throat> okay. So... We'll spawn back up, you know how the first time we did the sewer skip, I did the plunge. We'll spawn at the same post, basically. And like I said, there's many, many ways to do this. Uh, if Since I'm kind of spawned a bit off of the fence a little bit, you want to kind of readjust. Make sure you're kind of in the middle. So that way, you, when you start running, you don't fall off to the left or to the right, which is really easy to do. <clears throat> and that's why a lot of people might when they're first learning this, just not sprint and just hold analog stick up like that. Just so they have more control over their character. Once you get up here though, when you're practicing, I mean, pra this is a multi-part skip. You have to get on top of the suitcases. You have to run and jump without breaking them. You have to get on top of the <clears throat> the part he there where my hat is. And then you have to run and jump onto the fence. Choose whether or not you want to plunge or not, or just quit out. And then you have to run straight on a fence. So we run here, we kind of slow down, roll the dog attack, start spamming circle. And then we're going to go to this part here, which is the ladder cancel orb. <clears throat> so let's do... Let's do sewer skip um, a couple more times. Real fast. Just see if we can get it consistently. <clears throat> if you want to... I would say a later jump is usually ideal for the non quit out version, but especially early on, I would just pretty much always go for the quit out sewer skip. It's just way easier and more reliable. <clears throat> Cause if you, if you go for the, the plunge version slash the non quit out version and you jump too soon or you start plunging too soon, you're going to just completely miss a skip that without quitting out or with quitting out, you could have gotten easily. So it's, Definitely a lot less uh, leeway. Get up here. 
run here. See, I didn't even get a jump there, so I kind of just messed it up. <clears throat> Which is what I expected. I run straight into it. Get a nice lineup. Put out. You kind of want to like, I feel like, like I said, like a later jump to me feels better than an early jump. Like hitting sort of the middle or backside of the post is good, but if you hit before the middle, a lot of times it's not going to work. So now we're going to have to deal with the dog when we come in. So when I come in, I'm going to turn, start turning my camera like while the loading screen's happening. Adjust my character as fast as I can. Start sprinting. Slow down. Just be ready to roll. You don't have to slow down there for that. Um, but yeah, it, if you if you're just if you're dead sprinting, you're not going to be able to react to the dog. You're going to try and roll, and you're going to get a jump, and bad things are going to happen. And if he hits you while you're coming off the fence, especially when you're jumping, or even actually even if he able to, is, he hits you outside of your iframes when you're rolling too, you get this weird like hard fall where you just face plant and you can't get up for like a few seconds. <clears throat> um, I'll do the sewer skip one more time. So we can show it all in motion. I'll I'll try and go for the quit out or the the no quit slash plunge version, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Let's show it once more. But again, I'm gonna keep saying this, especially with skips. Uh try try variations of it. Watch different runners and see what works for you. There's definitely faster faster ways to set this all up than I do. I'm a I'm a definitely like a second tier runner at best. And skips are probably my biggest bane. All right, so we run up here, we break this, start sprinting, get up here, get up just past this middle part, run a jump on the post, quit out as soon as you can, be speedy about it. And if you are in a run and you go for the skip and you're relatively fast with it and you miss it the first time and you, you spawn back in at the part where you're supposed to jump, you lose approximately six seconds each, each attempt. So, I mean, even if it takes you a few tries, you're still going to save quite a bit of time. <clears throat> so we rolled that and now we got a hard fall. Okay, this is ladder cancel warp. <clears throat> Oh man, I'm gonna go ahead and save right here, just so I can show all this a couple, a couple of or a couple times, because there's there's a few weird things about ladder cancel warp that's gonna help you for the rest of the run. And if you decide to do um, other categories, like <clears throat> if you ever do all trophies run, ladder cancel warp occurs like <laughs> fifteen times, I think. Uh, it might not be that much. It might be like 12, but you can use ladder cancel all over the fucking run. So I'm going to show you some, some key things to keep in mind here because ladder cancel warp utilizes a quit out and keep in mind when you quit out, your character loads back in at the last place you had footing. Like I was talking about with sewer skip. So if it thinks your character's last footing was at the bottom of the ladder, that's where you'll spawn. If it thinks your character's footing is at the top of the ladder. That's where you'll spawn after you quit on a ladder. <clears throat> and I'll explain the actual ladder cancel warp in just a second once we get in there. <clears throat> but yeah, since you're coming in from the top and you're you're not actually touching the ladder initially, like there's pretty much no way when you do it from the top that you won't spawn in somewhere at the top. But I'll show whenever we get to Upper Cathedral Ward, I'll show you an example of one where you start from the bottom and just some stuff to keep in mind there. Okay, so whenever you normally climb on a ladder or you're falling, like if I jumped off right here right now and quit out in midair, when I came back in, I would spawn right here again. Same thing with the ladder. If I initiate the ladder cancel warp from top, from the top of the ladder when I have footing on this ground here <clears throat> this is where I'm going to spawn so if I did it here I trigger the ladder cancel warp did what I had to do <clears throat> went and unlocked shortcuts whatever hold on one second 
I drink a lot of water here. <clears throat> so yeah, we trigger it, we quit out, and it activates. We'd spawn here again. We'd do it here. You know, it's just, this is all ground that actually counts. This part doesn't. This is actually part of the ladder. It would spawn us off of it. So, basically what you do, after you finish sewer skip, you come over here and you, you're you gonna s initiate the ladder cancel warp. Which you can do many, many ways. You can unequip your weapon, like so, or this one, either weapon. You can trick your weapon, you can shoot your gun. Um, I think you can do it... I feel like there's other ways, probably like using items or something. What I usually do is transform my weapon right when I'm initiating it. So basically what you want to do is do one of these things, be it shoot the gun, whatever. I don't know. I didn't mean to pop blood bullets there, <clears throat> but I want to transform a weapon and then maybe 0.1 seconds afterwards. I don't, it's an arbitrary number because I don't know how exact it is, but just slightly after you do one of these things, you're gonna hit X and make sure you're close enough to actually have the prompt. If I did it here, obviously it's not gonna work. You need to be close enough to be able to start climbing the ladder from where you initiate it. So we're gonna transform our weapon and then just after we're gonna hit X, like so. You see how it sucks our character into being flush with the ladder now? That means that's one way to know that it worked. Another way is if you pull up your menu and you try and use an item, you can't. You can only use them from your actual quick bar and maybe even personal effects. I haven't tried it with personal effects. <clears throat> so, and because of that, since there's two ladder cam warps in this run, you want to make sure the things that you need are equipped on your quick bar. So. We trigger this ladder cancel warp, so we transform our weapon. See how I messed it up there, which is really easy to do. The timing is really awkward, so like transform and then straight into X, just slightly after. See, I'm actually just royally fucking this up. Boom, there we go. <laughs> My PB, I lost 16 or 20 seconds to this. Um, anyway, so yeah, we have it active. You can double check like this once you get on the elevator just to make sure. Um, and also if you see your character kind of get sucked into it like that, you know it worked as well. So, we trigger that and immediately run over here to this elevator, like so. As soon as we hit this button, use this time wisely, go ahead and heal up, and then equip your items. Okay, while you're waiting for the gate to officially open, like, start sprinting. Because you can kind of see, okay, this is without circle. This is me starting to hold circle. And then I'm now full speed. <clears throat> you want to basically try and get your character up to full speed before the gate opens. So, like, as the gate's about to open, just go ahead and start sprinting into it. And then we can get going. <clears throat> Uh, positioning on your items on your quick bar, or of your items on your quick bar, is totally up to you. I would highly recommend keeping your paper in a slot ahead of your pellets. So go ahead and pull up your quit out menu here. As soon as your character starts moving, or if you get if you get hit, you can know as well. <clears throat> this is one of those things you don't want to quit out too early, or your run will be invalidated. Uh, like I was saying earlier, it's like. If your character is still involved in the animation, you don't want to quit out yet. You have to wait for that to finish. <clears throat> so it's essentially, for the most part, it's like once you're out of your iframes for animations like that, you can, you can quit out. And voila, we are back at the ladder. And I'll go more into detail about the fact that this counts as the ladder right here as well as obviously climbing on it. <clears throat> if I was to climb here or anywhere on the ladder and quit out, this, is, this isn't this is even a ladder can't warp at this point. This is like dev intended the way this is supposed to work. When you quit out, it's gonna spawn me back where I initiated the climb. Whereas if I went all the way down, like so, and I started climbing after I have footing on the ground level. I start climbing 
and I quit out, <clears throat> I'm going to spawn back here, like so. <clears throat> and I'll go a little bit more into detail once we get to Upper Cathedral Ward. Because that ladder, you actually start climbing from the bottom. And if... I'll touch a little bit on it now. So I climb from the bottom. I'm not, not actually off the ladder yet. So if I ladder cancel warp, I trigger it like so. You see it's active because we can't do this. <clears throat> when I quit out now, I'm actually going to spawn at the bottom. So watch this. I'll, I'll, I'll just show you. I'll show you again in Upper Cathedral. It's just it's an important thing to keep in mind because it's it's also really pertinent in the if you ever plan on doing the trophy run since there's so many ladder cancel warps. <clears throat> so yeah, we are going to spawn at the bottom here. Boom. Kind of weird, but it, I mean, it makes sense if you just keep in mind that the top of the ladder that you can walk on that's actually still connected counts as you being on the ladder, basically. But there's no footing. You're still, see like here, you're, you don't have any footing yet until you step off of it. Now if you step off like this, and then you do the ladder cancel warp, <clears throat> then you'll spawn back up here. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay, ladder cancel warp is still active, um, and we've already gone up and done all the, the shortcut stuff. So you, you go up the elevator, you run down, you grab a bloodstone shard, you open the shortcut, wait for the your hunter to be done with the animation so you don't get, uh, you know, an invalidated run. You quit out, you spawn back here, and you start running towards Gascoigne. Transform your weapon now for just in a, in a second, I'll show you why. I run that general path there, and they haven't hit me yet, not once, running this path. This part, uh, just kind of run this path here, grab these. Almost want to immediately roll there, but that guy was actually passive, so he didn't actually do anything. I'm going to quit out here and make a Gascoigne save file. Oh wait, I just realized since I I was showing the ladder cancel warp, I'm actually going to spawn. <coughs> um, yep. I'm going to spawn back at the ladder now. <laughs> Okay, let's correct this real fast. So we're back at the ladder again. Okay, anyway. So yeah, and we just warp back. We got the shortcut. We got the bloodstone shard running this way. Why is that guy dead? Because he got ran over by a boulder. Okay, anyway, so we go here. And like we're picking this up. Can roll that. Go up here. And now we're going to quit out and actually make a save file. <clears throat> By the way, the way I'm getting to this quickly is whenever you're in the game and you've already quit out, you can double tap your PlayStation button and it'll go back to wherever you are. Um, if you're, you're ready to do save files or stuff, it'll just take you directly there and prompt you to close app and you can just immediately save. <clears throat> Okay, so Gascoin is significantly easier. He used to be a high reset point. Now he's almost a non-issue. I mean, you can lose time on him pretty easily, but dying to him is actually kind of difficult if you just kind of are aggressive toward him. <clears throat> I mean, the fastest fight, you want to probably be doing backstabs into charged R2 for that that big or the, the big damage on him. And, you know, obviously kill him quicker, but you can just sort of get your meter up and then just R1 spam him or even R1 L1 spam. <coughs> I'll probably go over this fight. I'll probably load up the save file multiple times. I'm not going to go into, like, super, super detail. I'll try and show a few ways to punish some backstabs and stuff, but... Yeah, he's just... You just kind of got to get a feel for him. You can punish so much of what he does, parrying and backstabs and whatnot. Uh, so the reason we have our weapon transformed already is you don't have... I mean, you can do it either way. You can transform like this in the cutscene or this. Either way. I like to 
trick it and then go through this. So like basically this cutscene triggers pretty much right at the door. So you want to be full sprinting when you hit it and then trick your weapon like so. And what that does is effectively gives you a speed boost for the fight. So we're going to get up here. We're going to pop our pellet. I sort of like run towards Gascoigne. And he shoots me backwards, of course. Let's go ahead and try and get another... Uh, if we can get another punish. He's shooting backwards and it's really strange. gonna punish his gunshot piece of crap an R1 L1 can dash in an L1 I was on it. I don't know if it's because sometimes when you make save files, like bosses behave weirdly if it's the save files right outside of the arena. <laughs> that was the opening on that fight was so strange to me. But I, again, I'll, I'm gonna mold it multiple times anyway. I'm just I'm I'm gonna try and get an uh, an ideal opener. I actually I just want like a close to perfect fight if I can, which would be like you run up, you pop your pellet. He goes in for an attack, you backstab into a charged R2, do like R1, L1. Or you could just backstab into L1, I guess. Let's see though. And this is going so well. Jesus, man. Sweet blood. Oh, it seems to me it's enough to make a man sick. <laughs> I I honestly don't know what's going on. I have really suck at this guy today. Like I'm, I'm playing so badly on him that I came, I came and talk about the fight because I'm getting my ass whooped. <laughs> Holy shit! I don't want to make excuses, but I really feel like the save files like fucking with him. Nah, I'm just playing badly. <clears throat> I'm gonna do it again. We'll do it multiple times. Usually, you want to like kind of run toward him, and it like baits. Few different attacks, and you can usually punish those with backstabs by wrapping around. So we're gonna run up here, pop this pellet, sort of sprint toward him, go for the backstab. Okay, then L1, L1. Let our stamina build up a little bit. Do some R1, L1. Go for a double backstab. It's enough to make a man sick. <laughs> that that is you know obviously more what you want to happen um i don't know i got nothing <laughs> just getting my ass whooped the first couple of times if, even if he like there's a lot there's so many attacks on this guy you can punish with wraparound backstabs basically though <clears throat> and out of the backstab Usually, or before this route, we used to backstab into mollies because we didn't have a pellet or strength level ups. The backstab molly was like the big wombo combo. Now you can do backstabs into another backstab or you can do backstab into L1. Uh, so transform your weapon at the cutscene. Let's see if we can get a good fight again. That wasn't like the perfect fight. It was pretty damn good though.
You can see how we can, we're kind of just like R1, L1 bullying him right now though. You can parry that if you want. Dash, L1, L1. If, if he had a lot of health left whenever he's transitioning, you probably want to go for a charged R2 into either another charged R2, you know, like backstab into a charged R2 or just like backstab L1. <clears throat> if he doesn't have much health, though you can just kind of like iframe his explosion and then just run up to him and just smack him a couple times like we did in the past two fights <clears throat> i'll try and get a fight where i can show the the timing though on backstabbing his transition into phase three because you have phase one which is the short axe phase two is the extended axe and phase three is his beast form so going from phase one to three or two to three depending because you can actually prevent him from going to phase two completely pretty easily, especially these days. So we transform our weapon on the cutscene, we spin options to skip the cutscene, we get up here a little ways, then pop our pellet, run toward him, with the backstab, he turned his body awkwardly, wrap around him. Okay, I'm just gonna L1 him for a bit here. Sweet blood. Oh, it seems to me. This might kill him here. <clears throat> okay, this is good actually. The, like the start of the fight was kind of iffy, but the finish was strong. So, if you don't allow, like you beat it, you if you kill him too fast, <laughs> or too fast, quote unquote, it's fine if you do. If you kill him that fast and he doesn't even get a chance to try and transform, your insight's going to be at five here. Whereas if he transforms at all you're going to get an extra insight point. So that's something to keep in mind, if, especially if you're going for the optimal route where you only pick up like a handful, maybe, you know, one or two madman's knowledge. That's That could definitely be an issue because if I carried this run on as is and didn't pop a madman's knowledge, which I don't even have one at the moment, I'm going to pick up two in Yargle. <clears throat> um, I wouldn't be able to buy the twin charts because you want 16 insight after or by the time you get to the dream after one reborn. So you would have to pop a madman's somewhere to, you know, make up for that. So it's fine as far as time goes. It's actually good to kill him that fast. But if you don't get the transition, if he, if he doesn't go for the transition into the beast form, you're not going to get the inside point. So just keep that in mind. You're going to have to probably pop one ear your madman's Yargle, or if you picked up the one in Bergenworth or wherever. It's not it's not like a huge deal because like I mean if you get up if you get into the dream after one reborn and you're going to buy the twin shards, oh no I can only buy seven because I only have fifteen insight and they're two each. You can just pull up your menu, pop a madman's and then boom you're done. But it's better to do that beforehand. So just keep stuff like that in mind. You see, entering the fight we get one insight, and then killing him we get two. And because V Swarm we get three. So run toward him. Go for the backstab. Do L1. You can do one or two there. Backstab this. The sweet blood. Hey, look at the timing here. You kind of you kind of have to wait. So you want to, if you're far enough away, you don't have to roll or dash his explosion. But you basically want to iframe it if you're too close, and then walk up and wait as long as I did there, and then go for the backstab. And you can do another charge R2 if he has a lot of health left. Otherwise, you can just do charge R2 into an L1 <clears throat> to finish him off. Because when he's in a staggered state, like if you've uh, backstabbed him, or even Sometimes if you like parry them and they're in that staggered state, they take like extra damage. So you backstab into another backstab and that second R2 is going to do a shit ton of damage. Or you can stagger them like that and then L1 or whatever. Anyway, so that's enough with Gascoigne. It started out pretty rough, <laughs> but showed most of what I wanted to. Like there's... You basically just... You can... If you want, you won't lose a lot of time, but... So like ideally you want to get a lot of backstabs on that fight 
and just you know do the most damage you can like that or if you can't get backstabs going you can just do some r1 l1s into you know that builds up your meter and also does posture or stagger damage to him so you pick up that blood workshop tool spam options or the cutscene here, which I actually stopped spamming, so I got a long black screen there. You actually lose IGT, as far as I understand, by the way, for, uh... If you get a black screen right that, that actually is really unfortunate. I think I lost like three or four seconds there. So anyway, you like this lamp, you run this way. This part, if you run, like, as soon as, like, just don't let go of circle this whole time and take the path that I'm taking right now, you won't have to stamina manage at all. Just wrap around tightly here to the left. Depending on what attack he does there, you might want to wrap around more to the right instead of just going sort of down the middle like I did. Yeah, I haven't let go of circle once yet. Go ahead and throw on your bolt hunter marks here. You can sort of jump here towards these bolt, the bloodstone shards and then just quit out. <clears throat> uh, yeah. But yeah, just try to, like, once you light the lamp, do not let go of circle the entire time until you're ready to jump. And it should play out exactly like it just did for me. Uh, what you're doing here, though, is you're just getting the 13 shards. So you picked up three, three bloodstone shards um, early on. So once you spawn in, pick these up, lock on to this guy with R3, and already have your mollies. Uh, equipped so just molly this thing just go sort of dash to the left like so um so if you're locked on you dash left at an angle and you can just kind of run up to the thing like so this guy won't aggro he's just he just doesn't care it's a that's a blade strat that he showed me pretty cool and obviously it kind of feels bad to have to use a bold hunter mark here, but you need those echoes to level up your weapon to a plus five. Whereas if you just regular hunter mark, you're going to lose all that. And then you're going to have to like find a cold blood or sell gear or something to be able to level up. So yeah, you use one of your bold hunter marks here like so. So yeah, no, no, pretty much no stamina management in that whole section. If you were in the right line, like I did. Um, so we're warming back to the Cathedral Ward Lamp we just picked up, which this is just one of the main hubs you go to many times throughout most of the runs, uh, especially like Trophy Run and all bosses, you're going to be coming here a lot, so you need to get that lamp after Gascoigne. And now here, all we're going to do is run straight up to the workshop bench, and we're going to level up our weapon to a plus five and get out of here okay while you're transitioning or while you're warping to Bergenworth so whenever you're opening a door or pulling a lever or warping you can hit down to go through your quick items so I had bold hunter mark selected so I'm saying I'm running down here I'll y'all you have to, you don't have to hit down or up here you just spam X because the only option here is Bergenworth so while I'm warping, I'm going to push down a few times until I get to my blue elixirs. You want these selected before you load into Bergenworth because you're going to use it instantly. I'm going to make a save file here and show um, this multiple times for uh, Linarium Key Skip and for the ROM fight. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and save file this. And we're already at 40 minutes for this, so I'll probably show. Hmm. I'll probably show this several times and then uh, stop this part. And then the next part, we'll do Yargle stuff. Because this is, this is pretty nuts. ROM, like, Linarium Key Skip's not that bad anymore because you're able to mostly leave the centipede alone. Um, cause you have the elixir and stuff and you don't have to worry about mobs chasing you, but the ROM fight, the ROM fight itself is actually worse than it used to be. It used to have a plus four with a gem 
and bolt paper. Now you have a plus five, but you don't have bolt paper and you don't have the gym. So that's a little bit awkward. <clears throat> so yes, when you load in here, make sure you've already selected your, your blue elixir if possible. And as soon as you load in, go ahead and use it. And just hold down circle for a bit here. You can go ahead and select your pellet if you want. Now when you're running here, I don't stamina manage until I, I, I do it like right about here. And stamina manage about maybe like half my bar up and then start sprinting again. And then coming through here, kind of take the line to the tail and jump. And see I messed it up and hit the centipede, which is fine because we can I can actually just talk about the skip for a second. You're basically you want to do the jump when the tail is out towards you the most. It doesn't have to be completely out, but that general direction. Cause the essence of what you're doing is using the mob's tail to elevate your hunter to be able to jump over the fence. You can see it, it wags back and forth. So when it gets out this way more, it's what we want. And then this sort of vase here, and this, like just to the right of this vase on the, the fence, that's kind of where we're jumping towards. So you want to run into this part of the centipede and start sprinting. And once the tail's out of ways, you kind of run into it and just, just slightly after you run into it, you you jump off the tail and it sort of elevates your character and throws you over the fence. So we're gonna we're gonna do that multiple times. Um, probably the the skip into the rum fight. So I like to go into rum, shoot her in the butt. So you're not only just killing spiders here, but you're also building up beast meter. So you want to do a lot of like... I don't even know what these spiders are doing right now. Uh, L1's... R1, it's a, the actual L1, it's going to build up the meter real nicely. You can go ahead and heal if you want while you're waiting for your, your health to or go back. And then you dash in L1, L1, R1, R1. Get a free hit in while she's backing up. I go to the back side and do the big L1 combo, and I have no idea. I must have waited too long. <clears throat> it's really hard to talk about this while doing it, a fight this difficult. Rom, or I'm honest to God, is. I would say easily in the top three worst bosses for speedruns, especially this this route, because she's way worse than she used to be. Like hell, even even like the older BL4 route was easier than this version of Rome. Like because you had like a plus six bolt paper pellet gem. Yeah. This this Rome is annoying, it's bug. <laughs> Okay, so we'll do the whole thing again. Okay. So, pop your elixir. I wait to stamina manage. Just hold down circle all the way up until about... Here. Get about half of the bar up. Run this direction. Try and jump at the base of the tail. I hit it again. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> So ROM, what you're doing is, if you're not going for yellow ROM, which is just ignoring the spiders altogether, you clear out all the spiders, and while you're clearing the spiders, you want to build up your meter a bit, because with a plus five and no paper and no gem, you actually need your meter kind of high to be able to get a stagger reasonably well. So sprint into this part of the centipede, jump about when the tail's there, pop your gear out. I meant to, maybe that's why I didn't get the... I don't know, I think I forgot to swap my gear last attempt. <sighs> so anyway, this is... I actually messed up last time. This is how I, ha I usually do it. I shoot R1, 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 and then I pop my pellet. Go 
build up some meter. Alcon to ROM, dash in L1, L1, R1, R1. You don't want to do too much damage here. I like to go to the backside. Do that big L1 combo. Like that. You can do um, two, three, four. Look at the light. You can turn around at a slight. I'll go more into detail with the ROM fight after I kill her. about here to the left of this pack for the ants to work. Okay. <clears throat> the okay, so in the run fight you need to pay attention to the the moonlight on the water. Let's you if you look up in the sky you can't see anything, but the actual reflection you'll see the you'll see in the water. Um you want to use that as a guide so like kind of always be mindful of where it is and your whenever she transitions if she transitions from phase one to phase two, you're probably going to reset your run anyway, unless you're just starting off and you have a lot of time to save. But a good fight, you're going to have phase one ROM, and she's going to warp immediately to phase three because you've done so much damage. So if that happens, you want to be like, look at the moonlight and then turn around backwards and then sort of go at like 45 degrees to the right, which I'll slow it down here and show it. Uh, like I'm gonna I'm gonna fudge the fight up intentionally once we've gotten past phase one just to show you where to look and where to head towards for phase three spawn. Is your you're wanna you're gonna wanna like get there as soon as possible just so you can you can try and finish her off before she has time to do anything in phase three. Because in phase one she doesn't have any abilities. Phase two she gets a few more, in phase three she gets all of her abilities. So you can see the moonlight just below her. See the reflection? See the reflection right there? Straight ahead. But yeah, we're just building up meter here. I'm waiting for my stamina bar. You can just heal for free. So with our meter the way it is, we should be able to L1, L1, R1, R1 again. And I'm going to try the R1, R1, R1 charge shark 2. Because we have a lot of meter there. Now keep in mind where the reflection is. See, it's right in front of me, right? Now turn around backwards. You're going to see phase 2 spawn. And then just to the right of that. You see how it's like a kind of a 45 degree angle? from the light like this is exactly backwards from the light if I turn this way there's the light turn back this way there's the second spawn and so kind of like a 45 degree angle from there you can see I had to move for the, the meteors whatever 45 degree angle from there that's where the third spawn is so that's kind of where you're going to be heading after phase one is done so you're going to want to get there in that general area as fast as possible to start uh, hitting ROM before she has time to do anything. <clears throat> Another quick thing, and very important, is you have to be careful with your meter. Like, if you have a quarter meter for the fight, by the time you get to ROM, after the spiders are dead, you're going to have to build up a lot more meter to have enough damage to stagger her easily. Or just if you have like half meter or more, you can probably just do... You don't have to worry about building it up anymore. Um, and... When you do your first rotation on her, you want to do 1,000 and less than 1,060 damage. But ideally, you want to do as close to that as you can get without going over. If you go over, she's at the point where she can transition whenever, or she can teleport whenever she wants. And you do not want that. You want to have, you want to dictate the fight. So get her as close to that as you can. You're just going to have to kind of mess around with, depending on how your spider clear goes you're gonna have to mess around with what combos you want to do to focus on not only building meter but also doing 
as close to 1060 as you can without going over it. So we're just going to go for a full fight here. So we're going to shoot. We're going to walk up without sprinting. R1, 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 R1. Pull back just a little bit. Pop our pellet. Get some R1, L1s in. You kind of get a feel for these spiders after a while. You can kind of, you can kind of feel when they're about to do something sh shady with you. See, oh, look how high our meter is. We might actually go over the damage point that we want. So I'm gonna try dash L1, L1, R1. If I do another R1, that's good. Now we're just gonna do three R1s, charge R2 immediately. Look at the reflection right in front of me. One, two. L1, got like a 45 degree angle from where they, they are spawning. About here-ish. See? And then roll, because spiders go just to the left of this pack, and you'll get the insta-warp. And just start, every, every time you see a cutscene, spam options. Because this counts for IGT. Black screens and cutscenes count for IGT, so... Well, obviously, black screens, if they happen, you can't really do much about them. <clears throat> but cutscenes always spam options to skip as fast as possible, especially. And then, like... Well, I mean, if you're, like, transitioning from... Uh, Gascoigne's fight into Cathedral Ward, that, that place is a cutscene, and it's also a black screen. That if you didn't spam consistently enough, you're actually gonna get a longer black screen. But sometimes it feels like you can't really do much about it. Um, but yeah, that's the ROM fight. So just keep in mind the whole less than 1060. Uh, be mindful of your meter. You might have to, you might have to improvise <laughs> at times depending on how much meter you're able to build up. Uh, I can show YOLO ROM as well. Uh, yeah. I'll show you a lorem. Why not? Let's show everything. Because we can... I want to do each part as like an, a roughly an hour long, so we can we have time to show you a a couple times. So, yellow rum is basically the same thing, except <laughs> you just don't fuck with the spiders at all. And it's insanely scary, and so much RNG involved, because you have ten spiders walking around you, and so many of their abilities can like one-shot you. So, you you mostly want to like you do the opener, and then you want you want Rom to back up if you can and get away from some of the spiders. Okay, so uh, elixir. Don't stamina manage for a bit until I mean you can do this. You can do a different variation of this, of course. Actually, encourage it. Let go. Get about half your bar up. And run this way. Try and get the jump. And the cool thing about the elixir there makes it really easy to try again. Okay, so we're gonna do yellow this time, which I'm gonna run right up to rum. I'm going to pop my meter and I'm gonna do an R1 3 L1 combo on her. I'm gonna run this way. I hope that she backs up a little bit. You're kind of waiting for the spiders to move away from her. You're gonna run up here, smack her a little bit one time, do a big combo. Yeah, see, the spiders uh, knock. I, I kind of messed that up, actually. Uh, I think. I didn't have like, she didn't like start transitioning. Maybe I didn't do enough damage. I might need to open up with an R2 or something on that second rotation. I, I Honest to God, I haven't even attempted Yellow Rom in this new route. The Yellow Rom in the old, or the old all bosses is actually not near as bad as this. And then you also have even worse than this, which is like any percent Rom going full yellow. Uh, yeah. We'll try that again though. You can see how crazy it can get though, because I mean, I hesitated, messed up just a little bit, and then I just died to spiders like instantly. We'll try that again though. I, I wasn't originally planning on showing Yolo Rom. I, like I haven't practiced 
this version of her ever. I've always done regular all bosses version, so yeah. I might not be very good at this. Alright, so sprint in. There. Swap our gear. <clears throat> Let's try this again. If I can't get in a few tries, then I'll just move on to Yargle though, probably. So as soon as your stamina gets to zero. Maybe I need an R2 there. I bet that's what it is. Maybe I need an R2 into three L ones. I can't even see. You can see why this is so cancer though, because she has a shit ton of health in this phase too. Yeah, I could have played that safe and actually killed her there. I was just going for it. I think I need to do R2 in the 3 ones. Again, I'm I'm kind of like learning this particular route version of Yellow Rom right now. I'll try to show it. I don't know the exact rotations. I always just go for regular Rom. I, I need to learn it though, because I actually need this time save at this point. <clears throat> I'll try it again though. So we're gonna do R2, just not a charge R2, just a regular R2 into three L1s with the opener, and then we'll go up to her smacker once with R1, wait for a stamina. Go to the back side and do R13 L1s for the stagger. Is your pretty much your options are you can actually R1 spammer for the stagger, like four or five R1s. Or you can do R1 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 R charged R2, or you can do R1 L1 L1 L1. And if you do the R1 L1 L1 L1, you want to be kind of toward the back side over. Whereas the R1 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 charged R2, you can you can like start in the middle. Is fine. Oh my god, what am I doing? What was that menuing? I, like hesitated. <laughs> Alright, we'll try it a few more times. Like, let's try the R2 this time. Should get like a seven something opener. Oh, it just fills more meter up. Okay. Yeah, because you don't get damage on that R2. Go to the back. I'm gonna roll away from that. This is the spiders are getting sketchy there. I don't think we are though. Yeah, so if you miss the insta warp, which is just to the left of that spider pack, uh, you can actually just quit out. All you need to worry about with the quit out is that, or two things. One, make sure in any boss that you quit out for, make sure you get the echoes. Make sure they pop up, like they start generating. As soon as they pop up, you're free to quit out. Keep in mind though, you also have insight build up, which is kind of slow. So you have like tick, tick, tick kind of speed, maybe a little bit slower than that. If you don't wait, you'll get the credit for the kill if you wait for the echoes, but your insight's gonna be clipped. So if I were to quit out as soon as I saw nine insight instead of waiting for the 10, I would only have nine insight coming back in, which isn't a big deal for this fight, but something like witches, it actually starts to matter. The insight's really tight on this run. So we got in the general area after Rom dies, we go towards the left of that spider pack from spawn two. And we want to get the answer warp, but we missed it. So we're over here though. Go ahead and quit out. And when we come back in, we either will get an insta warp coming right back in, or we'll be pretty much right next to the queen. So let's see. That fight was sloppy, but uh, it was relatively 
fast. I mean, we got the yellow and she backed up uh, twice, once or twice. And you see, you see as we loaded in, since we're close to the spider pack, when we loaded in, we get instantly teleported, or instantly into the cutscene. So yeah, uh, whenever you see this cutscene, or coming into this cutscene, just start spamming options preemptively. And now we are in Yargle. I'm, um, I'm not gonna show any more yellow ROM. Uh, I tried to show, show positioning for going from phase one to phase three, and uh, both versions of the fight, clearing the spiders and not clearing, and I showed Linarium key skip. Uh, messed with stuff though, uh, I would highly recommend using the elixir, it makes the skip a lot more consistent. Um, but next time we will go over Yaragul and probably Miko and Wet Nurse, and we'll continue the tutorial on from there. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.